brass band is brand new. I think it's the newest ensemble here in our Mason Jazz family, and uh, we just started this about two months ago. So I'm very proud of all the work that these musicians have put in so far. So how about one more time for you?
moved back down to uh, the area I grew up in, South Louisiana, and uh, New Orleans. This is the classic composition entitled Bourbon Street Parade.
right next is something also very new. We've been working on this for, I think, about three weeks now. This is a little sneak preview of Nick Sheehan's senior recital, which is coming up next semester. So everybody mark that when the date comes out so you can come and check it out. It's going to be awesome. And this is going to be on it. This is Nick's arrangement of a Miles Davis composition from later in Miles' career. So we're going to go back and forth between some trad stuff, some modern stuff, some trad stuff, some modern stuff. This is a little more modern. This is from the band that had Marcus Miller and Kenny Garrett in it. This is called Jean-Pierre. And this is Nick Sheehan's arrangement. <laughs>
Craven, Joan Hare, Mike Jacobson, Jackson on the guitar, and Tyler on the tech So if you know anything about the music scene in New Orleans, especially early on in the 20th century, um, when jazz was sort of just finding its footing, one of the main sources for music was the church, and that comes from our jazz funeral tradition down there. If you're familiar with that process, something really sad and mournful on the way to the gravesite, and uh, it would often be a hymn or something like that. And then our sort of take on life and the ending of life, essentially, is that, man, instead of us all sitting around being sad that you know Uncle Jimbo is gone, let's focus on all the fun that we had when he was there. So. It's, it's more of a celebration and a jubilant, you know, triumphant thing rather than a mournful, sad thing. So this is something that a lot of brass bands in New Orleans would play from that funeral tradition, and it's about the joyous release and flying off to heaven, and this is called I'll Fly Away.
make special mention again. I know I said he's our friend and he's helping us out, but Raymond Mason, the terrific drummer that you hear back there, did one rehearsal with us and is just reading all these charts. So one more time for Raymond. Thank you. Okay, next is a little bit of fun. Um, well, hopefully you've been having fun so far, but a little bit of more fun. This is something also from the brass band tradition, and every time I play this with one of my groups, I always say I dedicate this to my wife. Um, this is something entitled, It Ain't My Fault. <laughs> <laughs>
have time for one more, and we're going to bounce back to our uh, sort of more modern approach. This is something by the great Herbie Hancock. This is also brand new, not just to the band, but this chart is maybe a year or two old. I wrote this for a performance um, at the Army Band's Tuba Euphonium concert, or, uh, com uh, conference. International Tuba Euphonium Conference, words are hard. Um, so this is, if you can imagine, a big giant gathering of tuba and euphonium players that come around. Uh, a couple of years ago, we had the pleasure of playing with our friend Doc Nix with the Army Blues. That was a lot of fun. We'll do that again soon. And uh, so I wrote this for a tuba player named Andrew Hitz who plays with Boston Brass and is a friend of mine. And uh, this was a lot of fun. This is a brand new arrangement. I just brought this. These guys really did a great job of preparing this. We've had this for what, maybe three weeks or something like this. In the last month. So smart people read music. If your charts are good, those of you who want to write for a group, make sure your charts are legible and they're clean and they're easily understandable. That makes rehearsal way easier. And uh, so this is our version of Herbie Hancock's Watermelon Man. Okay. <laughs> 